Hi guys, welcome back to Medico Pharma lecture once again. Today we are going to continue fifth lecture on route of drug administration where we will discuss about classification of parenterals. So we will start with intravenous route. Okay, so uh, we will define it. Okay, injections given to vein is called as intravenous IV injection okay so now we will see few examples of intravenous root okay so first one is chemotherapy drugs like doxorubicin doxorubicin vincristine and antibiotics like vancomycin, gentamicin and antifungals like amphotericin. Okay. There are few notes. Okay. So the first one is IV push or IV bolus. Okay. It means large amount of drug is given in a small interval of time for example less than 10 minute or 10 minute it is one time dose okay so the second one is IV infusion so it is given at a slower rate over extended period of time so hence it is a large volume dose okay so example is dextrose solution okay so third point is angle of administration which is 25 degree in this case so if you'll see the injection is given at the angle of 25 degree to the surface of a skin now coming to advantages of intravenous root so it has 100 percent bioavailability because no drug is destroyed so no food drug interaction no first pass metabolism as drug does not go through the GIT no gastric irritation suitable for unconscious or vomiting or emergency cases suitable for high molecular weight peptide drugs 100% dose accuracy large volume of drug can be administered and quick onset of action will be also there okay now coming to disadvantages so can't reverse a toxic dose once it has been given, you can't reverse it back. Expert is needed. Expensive. They are relatively painful. And sterility has to be maintained. Tonicity has to be maintained if taken in. Maintained. If taken in large volume and less patient compliance okay now we will discuss about intramuscular root okay so first of all we will see definition okay so when the drug is administered to muscle by help of injection is called as intramuscular that is IM injection okay now we will see few examples of intramuscular root okay so the first one is haloperidol chlorpromazine lorazepam and codeine okay now we will see few notes okay 
so the first one is the solution up to a volume of 5 ml is administered in large muscles whereas 2 ml in a smaller muscles okay so the second note is intramuscular administration is is done at 90 degree okay so here in this diagram the first one is epidermis layer then dermis then subcutaneous layer then muscle okay or muscular layer so the injection has been given at 90 degree okay so this is overall now we'll see the advantages of intramuscular route so mostly uniform drug absorption will be there rapid onset of action good for non aqueous vehicle and certain mild irritating substances or drugs first pass and gastric factors are avoided self administration can be done so no need of export slow and sustained release of a drug now coming to disadvantage it is painful can cause muscular hemorrhage only limited volume of drug can be given nerve damage is also possible relatively expensive affect certain lab test like like creatine kinase test okay now we will discuss about subcutaneous route sc okay so we'll start with definition okay so injection given as a bolus below the skin that is under subcutaneous tissue is called as subcutaneous injection esc okay now we will see some examples okay like insulin adrenaline many vaccines morphine etc okay now we will mention a note that the angle of injection is 45 degree okay now we will discuss about few properties of subcutaneous route okay so subcutaneous tissue have larger surface area okay due to that there is large number of possible injection sites for multiple dosing okay so we can get larger surface area and larger sites for injection similarly it has less vasculature due to that there will be slow absorption of drug compared to intramuscular route okay less volume of drug is administered okay now we also know that subcutaneous tissue is rich in nerve supply due to that irritant drugs can't be administered okay so these are few important points related to subcutaneous route now we will discuss about advantages of subcutaneous route so it is ideal for poorly soluble suspension okay good for slow and sustained release of drug okay low risk of systemic infection okay easily self administered least painful in all parentrols okay then depot preparation 
can be injected okay as for example pellet implantation then cialistic and biodegradable implants okay now coming to disadvantages so volume limitation is there that we can give only 1 to 2 ml of drug at a time not suitable for irritant substances okay can't be given to shock patient who are vasoconstricted vasoconstricted as very less absorption of drug absorption of drug will be there okay this is not suitable in emergency cases because drug absorption is very slow so onset of action will be slow with this we came to the end of this lecture and we will continue the classification of parenterals in the next lecture okay thanks for watching us kindly subscribe our channel and please provide your feedbacks for our further improvements thank you thank you very much